Hello, my name is Matt, one of the pastors at the Well Community Church. Sounds good? Great. Welcome to the Well Community Church. I'm Matt, one of the pastors here on staff. It's just great to worship with you. We're glad that you're here, uh, both in person and online. Thank you for joining us. Uh, here at the Well, we kind of summarize what we're all about by saying we follow Jesus together for the good of the world. Uh, we want to have every aspect of our lives shaped by who he is and what he's done for us. Uh, we come together on Sunday mornings to worship him together, to be reminded of the good news of the gospel, and then to be compelled uh, to live for him uh, in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods, uh, with each other, 
Uh, and one of the main ways we do that throughout the week is gathering in community groups. We uh, live uh, as families on mission. Uh, we gather together, study the scriptures together, encourage each other, uh, celebrate and serve uh, our community, uh, and live life together on mission. So uh, if you are interested in getting connected here at the well or you have any questions, you can uh, fill out a connection card online. Uh, just on our main webpage, you'll find a link for that. Or you can also just simply email us at info at the wellsilverspring.org. Uh, also, uh, here at the welcome table in the back, you can fill out a connection card, uh, meet somebody in the back, and write in any questions or, or that you want to find community and community group, and we'll get you connected. Uh, with that, uh, let me kind of give a little bit of context for how we begin every service. Uh, because we don't know where everyone comes from as they step into the room here on a Sunday. You, you might be a conservative or a progressive uh, uh, a mom, a dad, a single, or divorced. Uh, you uh, might have had an, an amazing week or, or a terrible week. And uh, what we try and do at the beginning of every service is just get honest with our God in confession. Uh, because every one of us, uh, he calls to live holy lives obedient to him. And every one of us, when we look back at our week, we realize, man, I did not say the things I wish I would have said or do the things I wish I would have done. Uh, I have thought things I wish I hadn't have thought. Looked at things I wish I hadn't looked at. I, I didn't live up to who I wanted to be this past week, much less live up to who God calls me to be. Uh, so we just spend time getting honest with God at the beginning of our service, silently praying and confessing the areas we've fallen short. So let's do that now. And then we're reminded, man, he's so gracious. He loves us and welcomes us into relationship and to worship him this morning. Uh, so let's talk silently and specifically uh, to our God about this past week. Father, you say, be holy because you are holy, to live obedient, pure, perfect lives. Uh, but we know that, that we've not lived that way this past week. It's why we're so grateful that your son has lived in our place perfectly. It's why we're so grateful that he has taken the penalty for our sin perfectly on the cross. It's why we're so grateful that he has risen to new life to welcome us into relationship with you this morning and this past week and in this coming week. By your grace, we are yours. So God, would you open our minds, would you open our hearts, would you open our mouths to worship you, to give you praise this morning. Would you transform us by your word and send us out of here, compelled by your grace to live for you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and worship our God together. Good morning to you all. Good morning to you all. <laughs> Thank you to those of you who are here in person and those who have joined online. My name is Bobby Jackson. I'm the worship director here, and we are excited. It's February already. It's a new month, a new day to shape how we look at our month, how we look at the rest of our day, how we look at our week. So this morning, we're going to proclaim the name of Jesus. We're going to sing together. I'm going to encourage you, however you feel, comfortable, even if it's a little out of your comfort zone. Let's raise our hands. Let's sing. We're going to proclaim his name this morning. Are you with me? All right, let's do it. Praise 
Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let's sing this chorus together. Amen. Amen. Come on, lift it up. Amen. God, we pray. this morning, church. We're going to take it back a little bit this morning. If you know this song, just sing along. We're going to shout Hosanna. Let's lift it up one voice. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. 
life, you give us breath, you provide for our every need, and you call us into meaning, you give us purpose, you ask us to be a part of your work, to be in your word, and God, I just pray that this morning we would truly be who you call us to be as your church, that, we'd be, that we would be hearing from you, that we would be serving you, that we would be knowing you more. So Holy Spirit, I just pray that you would be in this place with us this morning, that we would get to know you at a deeper level, and that we would not leave the same as we came in. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, and kids are dismissed to their classes. Hey, let's thank uh, the worship band for leading us to praise our God. Thank you, guys. Uh, we give our whole lives as a response to all that Jesus has given to us. Uh, one of those areas is financially. Uh, we give in response. Hey, Leo, how are you, buddy? <laughs> hey, Titus. Uh, we give our, our finances, uh, everything he's given uh, for his purposes. Uh, so uh, you can give online. That's probably where about 98% of our folks give. Or you can also give uh, in person here in the back uh, in the blue box as you leave. 
uh, we are using the funds that uh, the Lord has provided to our church for his purposes. Uh, we're supporting uh, a member who is in need financially uh, this past week. We're, we're helping build a second church uh, building in India right now. So uh, you can find a lot of those stories online and give praise to God for the way that he is using uh, his resources here for his purposes. A second way we kind of respond uh, to giving of our lives is through serving. Uh, he's, he's given us gifts and time uh, and effort and ability uh, to serve him in response to all he's given to us. Uh, so there are a whole bunch of ways we can serve, particularly as more and more are coming back on Sunday mornings. Uh, you can serve in the welcome team. You can serve downstairs with family ministry. You can serve in the worship and, and AV uh, teams. Uh, there are a whole bunch of different ways to serve on the creative team and others. Uh, so if you've got uh, a skill uh, that fits in one of those or just available and want to serve or want to kind of discover that, you can uh, email Bobby Jackson. His email is on the slide. Or just email info uh, at thewellsilverspring.org, and we'll get in touch with you. Uh, last is uh, the What's Happening page. It's got everything that you need for what's going on at the well. Uh, we've got a lot going on in this season. Uh, there's a whole bunch of women's events coming up. Uh, there is also a toddler thrive that's happening, uh, second service, uh, how to raise up toddlers uh, in the gospel. So uh, you can go to that second service, um, and it's for the next four weeks as well, uh, and then find out everything that's going on on our What's Happening page. With that, uh, let me read the scripture for us this morning and invite uh, Ronald, a pastoral resident here at the well, up to preach for us. Uh, let's clap Ronald up as he comes. Our scripture reading comes out of uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, verses 15 and 16, and then I'll read a few more right after those slides as well. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 to 16. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you are ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. That's the word of God. Amen. Thank you, Matt. Good morning, church. How are we doing in this cold weather? It's cold. But I'm from El Salvador, but believe it or not, I actually love the cold. And when people say, well, ain't you from El Salvador? I was like, yeah, that's why I'm living in the United States of Maryland, not in El Salvador. So, or for that, for that matter. So today's scripture, uh, it's a long one. So bear with me. I'll try to navigate the scripture through. Uh, but one of the things that, as I stand here, I'm pretty, when I'm here, I'm very transparent and very honest. This is, has been a very hard scripture, has kept me up at night, woke me up really early. And the passage that kept going over and over and over again is the one that we just read. So I'm going to try to navigate and eventually get to that passage. Uh, but let's open our Bibles, and we're going to start reading the Word of God. And as you remember, uh, this is a series. So uh, keep that in mind as we go through. So 1 Peter uh, 1, 13 through 14 reads, Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As to beating children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. So a lot to pack in there, but I just want to highlight a couple of things. Therefore, it's a bridge to the previous uh, verses. So if you don't know what happened last week, I'll suggest you go to our page, and you can download and see Matt's sermon there. You can get caught up on that section, okay? But one of the things that I struggled with as I was reading this passage was what is holiness? You know, it's this word, like, that we always use or sometimes we avoid or we use in, uh not necessarily correctly. So one of the things that I did trying to prepare for today's sermon was try to define what is holiness. But then also, the Bible is not very specific in terms of holiness, but it's more about specific about what makes you unholy. Therefore, that's what makes you holy, right? But I'm trying to like, I'm a professor, so I'm trying to simplify things, I'm trying to get definitions, trying to simplify it for you as best that I can. So I struggle with that. To the point they had to read Leviticus. Think about that. 
right? I had to go to Leviticus and read from 11 to 22, and there were so many things popping up there, but it helped me navigate and come up what I would say a good uh, full definition of what holiness is and what is not. But before we get to that, one of the things that the verses 13 and 14 does is begins to set what's going to happen next. Okay? So prepare yourself. So we have the words underlined there. How did you prepare this morning to come to church? Like in my case, because I was nervous, right? I took out the outfits last night, tried them on, and then I realized that the waistline is not what I used to, right? So I had option A, option B, and then by the time I was down to option Z, right? So it's like this, how do you prepare? Now, as children and as parents, we have to prepare our children, correct, to arrive sometime early to the service. Now, this church is blessed because the average is like 4.5 children, right, per family, right? So think about the preparation that it takes to get out of the house early. How do you prepare yourself to come and worship? How do you prepare yourself to come to the house of God? What are the things that you do mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually to come to the house of God? Now, the words that it uses here is prepare your mind for action. It's almost like battle. I'm not a military person, but I know we have military individuals in the, in the church. How do the military prepare themselves? What are the training do they go through? As a doctor, as a teacher, as a professor, as an IT, what are the things that we prepare yourself? But not only prepare our minds for action, but also being sober-minded. Now, Set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. A lot of the stuff that we do, we think it's about us. But it's not. It's about him. And today when we get to verses 15 and 16, please remember that. It's not about you. It's about him. When we think about holiness, think about who he is and what he has done for us. He is holy. So therefore, let us be holy. And it's not an easy thing, let me tell you, because I wrestle with this. How do we become holy? What is the process? How do we get there? Now, verse 14, as a good parent that God is to us, look at the language that he uses. As obedient children, do not what? Confirm to the passions of your former ignorance. Now, I don't know your background, personally. I was blessed that I come from a third-generation uh, evangelical Christians on one side and fourth-generation on the other side. We were the, my grand-grandfather was the first uh, evangelical Christian in El Salvador in his village. So I never grew up with alcoholism, drug abuse, domestic violence. I didn't see none of that. But I am sinful just by nature, correct? So regardless of your background, it says here, do not conform to the passions that you were once had. Now, if, you're, if you had anyone or family member experience drug abuse, you know it's a difficult journey to recover. There's many relapses. It's not a straight shot. Sometimes the family suffer multiple times as this individual goes into recovery. And they're doing so well, and then all of a sudden, they fall back. And this is the notion here. As individuals that live in a holy place in this earth full of sin, do not go back to your passions that God rescued you from. Or fight your sinful nature. As what? As obedient children. Now, as we begin to unpack this language there's a lot of references to the previous verses. There's a lot of references to uh, the Old Testament. So I can't connect all those dots for you today. So bear with me. I'm going to try to skip some things. One of the things that we learned from COVID is this idea of cleaning and san uh, sanitizing the area, correct? Now, I was going to bring a bag of Lysol and wipes. I didn't know how you were going to take that. So I just brought my hand sanitizer up, right? The 22nd rule, right, that your children had to memorize. The mask. Now, there's some individuals who took it to the nth degree. For example, my sister, to this day, she will clean 
every single package that enters the house. When she goes grocery shopping, every single item has to be cleansed. Now, in our case, we didn't do that, right? Or take your shoes, take your clothes that you wore outside, put them to the laundry, separating this notion of cleanliness and sanitation. That, in essence, is what we're talking about, holiness. We're impure. We have touched impure surfaces. Therefore, we have to cleanse ourselves, sanitize ourselves. Now, as we begin to unpack these verses, 13 and 14, the things that I want you to take away from those verses are two things. They're commandments. Prepare yourself to be holy. In other words, understand that there is a process to be holy. Number two, do not make yourself unholy. Wrestle with your sinful nature. Therefore, it's a decision that we have to make. Now, we begin to think about these things and we say, but how does that look day to day? And I was just thinking before we got up here, it's really easy to be holy on Sunday, correct? I mean, if you're not holy on Sunday, there's other issues going on. But Monday through Saturday, it's really hard. Sunday, from 9.30 to about 10.45, we're as holy as we're going to be for the rest of the week, correct? But how do we carry that holiness for the rest of the week? Now, it's not an easy thing. You have to wrestle with it because you are sinful by nature. But it starts with your mind. It starts preparing. It's understanding what you need to do. It's comprehending. Now, but also it takes effort not to be unholy. You have to wrestle. And how do you do that? You pray. You read the word. You fast. You fellowship with other individuals that are trying to be holy as well. And as we get to the meat of the sermon today, with the time that I have left, if I don't finish, stick around and we'll do part two, okay? Uh, maybe that way we can increase the second sermon, okay? But um, so when we get to 15 and 16, it says, But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in what? In all of your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy for what? Come on. For I am holy. Don't miss it. This is the, this is the apex. We're at the climax. He who has called me is what? Holy. You also be holy. In what? In all of your conduct. These are powerful words. This is why I got stuck over and over and over again. Kept coming back to verse 15 and 16. This notion, right, that he who has called me is holy. Therefore, I need to be what? Holy. When I read it, this is not something that you should do. Something that if you want to do, but this is a commandment. You have no other option because you have been cleansed by his blood. I see your faces. You're not liking this, right? It's his word. Trust me, I struggle with this for the week and a half. Right? What does it mean to be holy? What is he trying to tell me? Now, in order to understand holiness, you need to understand the character of God and who he is. He cannot be around sin. But I am sinful. He cannot touch anything that is unholy. Yet, he reaches out to me. We come on Sunday, and in many cases, we're unholy to worship him, correct? Yet, he wants our praises. This is irony. This is not straightforward. But he commands me to be holy. And this is why you need to go to Leviticus. It's quotations there. On verse 16, since it is written, you shall be holy, 
for I am holy. Go to Leviticus. Start unpacking it. So this is kind of like, if you're taking notes, this is some of the things that I learned as I was reading uh, Leviticus. Every time that he alludes to holiness, this is some of the words that he uses. Acceptance. Sacred. Respect. Honor. Acceptable. Obedience. Acknowledge. Offering. Dedicated. Sanctify. Sacrifice. Consecrated. Special purpose. Special offering. Special calling. Pure. Set apart. Now, I can go on for the next 20 minutes and look at each of those words. But I want to focus on two words today. I want to focus on pure and set apart. We are instruments that have been purified, cleansed, not by hand sanitizer or Lysol, but the blood of Jesus. I have also been called to be set apart, sanctified, for his glory and his purpose. Now, we're going to wrestle with this notion. How can I be purified, yet be in an impure world? How can I be set apart as an instrument, yet be called upon to reach those that are sinful? I'm an instrument. I've been set apart for a purpose. Let me give you an example. Many years ago, I wrestled with this notion. Monday through Saturday, you know, I was the son of a pastor, right? I mean, sorry, Sundays or weekends, I was the son of the pastors. But Monday through Friday, I was an academic. I'm Dr. Luna, right? Dr. Luna on one side, the son of the pastor on the other side. And for decades, those two worlds never met. It took Many decades. Remember, I was born in a Christian household. I always saw my parents preaching on Sunday. My grandfather preaching, praying, my grandmother praying. But no one took the time to tell me that those two worlds can be unified. For decades, right? I was here, and then on Sunday I was over there. I don't remember the moment or the time where those two worlds met. But I do remember an instance at Maryland when I was advising students. It was around uh, mid-finals uh, where uh, there's a lot of situations where depression, uh, students not taking their, their medication, uh, suicidal thoughts, you know, failing grades, high stress level. And I remember I had my office hours. I uh, always had an open-door policy. If I'm there, you can come and talk to me. And I remember, the end of the semester, behold, situations were rising up. The first thing that comes in, she goes, I ha I'm suffering suicidal thoughts. Uh, I am depressed. And I was like, you know, let me see what we can do, refer her to certain things. The next student comes in. Uh, I remember him really well. African-American man, very skinny. Uh, I know him because he was struggling through a lot of his courses. And then he says, I need to tell you something. I said, what is it? He said, I cut myself. I'm, I'm depressed. I'm suicidal. And I began to realize there was a theme going on. Never ever in the history of my academic life have I ever said these words, can I pray for you? I felt compelled to reach out to this individual and pray for him in a secular, highly secular environment. And he said, yes, you can pray for me. So I prayed for him. I don't know what happened to him. Never saw him again. The next individual that comes, he said, Dr. Luna, I'm struggling with my classes. I'm failing. I'm driving back and forth between here and Pennsylvania. My mom has stage 5 cancer, stage 4 cancer, breast cancer, and she's terminal ill. And I said the same thing. Can I pray for you? Back to back to back. At that moment, those two worlds met for the first time. And that began to set certain things in motion. The Bible study started popping up. I began to be more open about my faith. 
people start coming in from lecture and saying, I want to know more about those trips that you take. I never used the word mission trips. I never used the word, you know, I'm a Christian. There was just, you know, some coding words in there, right, as I lecture. But people begin coming, talking down and say, can I learn more about the trips that you take? What is the nature of those purposes? And if people began to open up that they were Christians as well. Then I had to testify. I'm a Christian. I'm a pastor. I'm a son of a pastor. And it became to just things began to change and unravel in a different way. And I don't know where you're at in your life and academic, professionally, but I bet you that your words are not together. You're probably struggling. How do you unify these words? How do you unify what you do on Sunday versus what you do Monday through Friday or Saturday? I don't know. But I can tell you those two worlds should not be divided. You should find a way to combine them. Because you are holy. The one that has called you, it's holy. And therefore, you need to be holy, not in one area, but in everything that you do. In all of your conduct. In all of the areas of your life. You have to pursue holiness. It's not an easy thing. Because you struggle day to day. There's days that you're high in spirituality and there's days you're low. But how do you pursue holiness in all of your conduct? And that's parents. When is the last time you had actually sat down with your child and said, look, whatever you do in life, make sure that you glorify God and honor Him because you have been set apart. You have been purified by His holy blood. One of the hardest conversations I ever had to have is with friends of mine. They grew up in church with me. And I began to ask them, look, why don't you allow your child to come with us in our mission trips? I remember really well, a good friend of ours, they're sitting in the, in the table. And, he, and she goes, he's a junior and he was a junior in high school at that time. He goes, he doesn't have time for that. I was like, he doesn't have time in junior year of his high school year when is he going to have time? We as parents sometimes begin to create this narrative in our children that you have to live separate lives in terms of who has God prepared you to be, whether it's through careers or talents or whatever the notion is as a musician. And then we said, I can't combine those two worlds. They don't work. They do work. Because the one that has set you apart is holy. Now, as you go home and you think about these verses, think about a couple of things. As you try to wrestle with what is holiness. From what I read in Leviticus and from what my readings of the Bible this past week, I came to the conclusion that holiness is about him. It's not about me or my nature or my status or my sinful ways. It's about him who is holy. Holiness is infectious. Not like COVID, right? But if you want to use the analogy, go ahead. Right? Like Omicron, right? Which we all got in the, in the holidays, right? Holiness should infect all of your being. All of your doing, all of your thinking, and let me take it a step further, and I know you're not going to like this, even in your finances. Look at the list of your budget, and look at the things that are making you unholy, the things that are wrestling with you to make yourself closer to God. I mean, I can imagine right now, right, I think my wife is watching, but, um, you know, we have a Hulu account that I, I can't even log in, right? I have Disney Plus. I have Apple TV. I have Netflix. I have uh, Amazon Prime. What else do I have? I don't have Paramount Plus, but if someone wants to give me the password, I'll take it, right? <laughs> so think, lots of, yes, lots of TV, right? So think about that nature of me trying to get closer to God by I am being distracted what is infecting my being and my thoughts and my doing? What's infecting our children? Holiness is not an option. It's a commandment. A 
you're a Christian, if you raise your hand one day, you proclaim that he is your Savior and your Lord, you have to be holy. It's a commandment. Number four, holiness is an instrument that has been set apart and purified for his glory, only for his glory, nothing else. So I have been set apart. I have been chosen. I have been called. And sometimes we wrestle with that. How can I be called? How can I be set apart? It's an instrument. You've been set apart. Pray. Ask him, how can I be used as an instrument that you have set apart? It's not an easy discussion. But I pray that as you leave today, you begin to ask this question. You begin to look at yourself and you begin to think about how can I be worthy of his glory and his honor because I've been set apart. Verses 17 to 21. And I call on him as father, who judges impartially according to each of one's deeds. Conduct yourself with fear. Throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed for the futile ways inherited from your fathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. One of the things that we need to understand is that we're unholy. But he is holy, and he's calling us to be holy. But once we understand that we are holy, we need to reflect that holiness. And I think for many Christians, this is where we stop. We've been sanctified, we've been purified, we've been set apart, we have been cleansed, and it stops right there. But one of the things that we need to begin to realize is that there was a ransom play, play, play for ourselves. High price. For your sins, for my sins, for my children, for my wife. That precious blood of Jesus was spilled over to make me holy, to be like him. Now, it's a difficult thing because we are in a holy, a sinful world. But as verse 17 says, as you are here while you are on earth, remember this. Be holy, act holy, reflect my holiness while you are exiled on earth. Now, one of the things of us understanding his sacrifice is that we should be gratitude. We should be thankful because of the price that he paid. Now, holiness usually is not associated with being grateful. Holy is not associated about being gracious. But that is the notion of those verses. Think about the price that Jesus prayed for you. Think about his suffering in the cross. Think about the blood that was spilled for me and you. It should make you reflect his holiness. Not by force, but willingly. And it's a hard thing as we begin to think about holiness. What does holiness mean to you? As you define it, as you write it, as you read through Leviticus, just be grateful we're not living in Leviticus time. I mean, I was reading some of this stuff and I was, I was you know, I'm, I'm not so analytical or logical, but I was like, some of this stuff does not make sense, right? If the insect that dies in the uh, yard where your food is, then that food is unholy. That jar needs to be broken. I'm like, but 
I didn't, it wasn't my fault that insects die in that jar, right? But there was law. There was ruling and, ex, you know, expectations. But if we were to translate that to today, we have to think about what is making us unholy. Right? I gave you the example of television. But there are other things in your life, and in my life, that's making me unholy day to day. It's to realize, it's to acknowledge there are things that are making us unholy. There are things that we're wrestling with and we're struggling with. There are things that we need to say, I cannot. Many years ago, I had a soccer career, if you want to call it, quote unquote. I was a prospect. Not a very good one, but I was a prospect. You wouldn't tell by my physique now, but yeah, I was. I was a goalkeeper. Okay? Yeah, not a good one, but yes. My joke was that I was the best player in a bad team and the worst player in a good team. Okay? That, was my, that was my ratings. Okay? And I remember for years I used to play soccer Monday through Friday and obviously Saturday to Sunday be at church. And I remember doing lots of pickup games where I used to live. And there were a lot of soccer leagues and semi-professional leagues that they wanted to recruit young players. Now, the problem was that these teams were filled with older men. And they used to bet a lot of money. Okay? So if you were a good player, they would actually would put a bounty on you. And they would try to break your leg, you know, injure yourself so they can win. Okay? Now, I got invited to play in these games. And I was like, when is the game? They would be, it's on Sunday. And I would say, nope, can't go. Because I had to go to church. And I do remember the only time that I said yes to a game. It was like the 80th minute. Remember, I'm a goalkeeper. They needed a goal, and they sent me as a striker. I go up for the ball, and I got elbow right in my eye. Right? Blood started gushing out. Did not hit the ball. Did not score. So I wish we had a happy ending, but it did not. Right? But I realized right, that Sundays were for God. I realized, and I fought with myself about that. I could have gone a couple times and played, but I didn't. For each of us, there is something that we need to set apart. There's need something that we need to cleanse in our lives and say, no, we're going to dedicate this for God. And I know it's a struggle. It's a struggle to give up things that you like, things that you desire things that you wish for. But as you become sanctified, and as you become purified, and as you begin to seek His holiness, the Holy Spirit will start telling you. He will start convicting you and saying, you know what? You shouldn't be doing that. You know what? You need to stop that. You know what? You need to focus more on me. And you're going to wrestle with Him. So the last point, we get to the last verses. And it says, Who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God, having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not a perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. I understand what is holiness. I understand what makes me unholy. I understand that I have to work at being holy. I understand that it is a commandment. Now I need to reflect his holiness. Like I said, this is a hard thing. And I heard this from a preaching this week. The most miserable people on the face of the earth are Christians who have turned their back on Jesus. And I will add a little bit more to that. I have known Christians, quote unquote, that profess to be Christians. They're not only not lovable or loving, but in some cases, they don't reflect God's love. Why? If we had to unpack their lives, I bet you there are things that are making them unholy. 
I bet you there are things that they're struggling with. It could be their faith, their conviction, their obedience to the word of God. They're wrestling. And their outward expression is one of not love. Many years ago, uh, I got invited uh, for a friend of mine to a church. And they had this pastor brought in from God knows where. And they invited us to eat afterwards with him. And I was like, I don't know, 22. I was still in college. And I remember what we go to a Chinese restaurant. This is the pastors, the elders, um, other pastors. And the way they describe and they behave towards the waitress. I would say it was not just ruling, it was unspeakable. They just finished preaching, like, literally 30 minutes ago. Right? Holy, sanctified, pure here at the pulpit. But the moment you go out into the world, what are you reflecting? What is your social media reflecting? God knows. Oh, my, right? Some of the things that we read from Christians, quote, unquote, it makes you cringe. It makes you block them. It makes you unfollow them. It makes you unfriend them. Because they're not reflecting his love. So if you get anything out of today, Go back to verses 15 and 16. Go back to the center of that verse. Go back to the intent of Peter unifying what was in the Old Testament to the New Testament. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Close your eyes. And let that word just simmer in your brain. Bounce around your brain. What is holy? What is holiness? What's making me unholy? What are the things that I'm wrestling day to day that is making me unholy? And my prayer today for this church, for those who are listening, those who are at home or will watch later, is that God's true nature and his true character will reflect it on us. That what is inside of us, that gratitude, That graciousness, that thankfulness, that love, that mercy, that grace, the fruit of the Spirit will erupt in an outward expression towards those that are sinful. Those that we don't like. Those that we don't agree with politically. And that we're able to reflect God's holiness. Dear Father, this verse 15 and 16 has been just convicting me, just wrestling with holiness and unholiness. Father, as we leave today, that we go home and we begin to open our scriptures again, and we begin to dive in further and begin to understand what is holiness. How do we achieve holiness? How do we reflect holiness with one another and our family members and our children in our workplace? Father, we are holy because you are holy. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you that you're moving and your spirit is convicting us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. You know, every week uh, we, we take communion, and it's because every week uh, we realize the Lord has set a standard for us that we cannot attain.
that he said, be holy as I am holy. And we look at our lives and we say, man, I want to do that, but we fall so short. And then he meets the standard of his holiness by sending his son, who is God himself, who lives a perfect, holy, meeting the standard that is set in God himself (laughs) and walks in our place. And he meets us uh, in our guilt and in our shame and in our shortcoming and says, come on in by grace. As the passage says, we've been purchased back, ransomed, made pure by the precious blood of Jesus. And that gives us new motivation to live lives that are set apart for him, to live lives that are holy and obedient in every minute of our life. Here on a Sunday, and tomorrow morning on a Monday. So if you're in Christ, would you take and eat and remember this morning that God has met this standard for you in the precious blood of His Son, Jesus. And would that compel us to live lives that are set apart and holy for Him today, tomorrow, and in the days to come. And if you're not in Christ this morning, would you receive him? The standard is too high for you to meet. <laughs> You'll never meet it on your own. Would you embrace the grace that Christ has poured on you? And come and be his child this morning. Let's take and eat together. taking your communion, we're going to invite you to stand and sing with us this morning.
Praise God. Father, we thank you so much for your grace. You set the standard for our holiness and we could never attain it. It's you. Then you came to earth as your son, Father. You walked in our place, holy, blameless, and pure. Then you paid the price that we could not pay, that we should have paid. (laughs) As your son was slain in our place, and by faith you've made us holy, you've given us his righteousness, you've made us sons and daughters. So God, in grace, we want to give our whole lives to honor his blood, to honor his sacrifice in response to who you've made us, holy, pure, and blameless in him. God, take every minute of our days. Take every piece of our lives. We want you to reign in it all. We want to be set apart, holy. We want to be pure, holy for you in response to to all Christ has done for us. God, you've welcomed us in by your grace. Thank you. Might our holiness be a response of gratitude. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Man, what a God we have. Uh, It's a joy to praise him with you this morning. Might we now live our lives in praise and worship to him in holiness, set apart and pure because of all he's given us in Christ. If you want to connect with us on social media, you can on all the avenues we have. If you want to uh, ask any questions or get connected into a group, you can fill out a connection card at the back welcome table on your way out or online. And let us go and live this week knowing it is with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot, that he's purchased us, he's ransomed us. Having purified our souls, By our obedience to the truth of the gospel, will we live with sincere brotherly love, loving one another earnestly from a pure heart in Christ, since you've been born again, not of perishable seed, but imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God, the gospel. Go and let's enjoy living for our God this week together. You're dismissed.